Uh, hi everyone, I just thought I'd um, take a few minutes to give you some or a bit of an overview of uh, a better route planner, uh, the premium edition, some of the facilities and services you get with it, uh, and the integration with Leafspire, which uh, I did uh, yesterday or day before, um, and uh, just how that works and some of the information that you're uh, that you're able to get with it. Um, the basic A better route plan is actually pretty good. Um, I've got a, a 2020 uh, 40 kilowatt Nissan Leaf, and when I put the reference data in there, um, the data that it already knows uh, from the car, the manufacturer, uh, its average miles per kilowatt, um, it's actually been pretty good. State of charge uh, throughout the journey is reasonably accurate. I'd say it's probably on the pessimistic side, if anything, I end up uh, getting a little bit more than I expect uh, when I arrive at my destination, uh, which is which is okay. I understand and completely get that um, it needs to be on the pessimistic side, a, a bit of um, um, you know, coverage um, in terms of protection. Really, uh, they they obviously don't want people, they don't want to underestimate it, and people running out of uh, battery at their destination. That that wouldn't be good press. Uh, so yeah, I end up arriving with more. Um, I don't do a lot of charging en route. I've not had the car for very long, um, but. It's, it's good that it's slightly pessimistic for safety, but really if you're planning multiple trips and we've got a few big trips coming up, um, I don't really want to arrive somewhere with 10 or 12%, in fact, and it's sometimes been the case, more than I expect, because it would have meant that I could have perhaps taken a different charger option. Um, it meant that I could have perhaps stopped a little bit later um, and the journey plan could have been you know, a little bit more uh, efficient. We don't really want to stop at charging uh, stations that regularly. We don't want to charge for any more than we have to. So uh, the more accurate this is, the better, really. Um, an advancement on the basic uh, is the premium version, and that gives you latest weather information, gives you the latest wind, which is, um, as I've found out, super important. Headwind and tailwind makes a big difference. Um, and of course, the weather conditions, uh, not just um, temperature, but also the road conditions, um, whether they're uh, wet or dry makes a difference. Um, and of course, the latest traffic information as well to give you an idea of uh, you know where the traffic hotspots are, any rerouting that might be necessary, and of course um, that has an effect on your state of uh, charge uh, on arrival as well. So, yeah, I I think the premium, if you if you're doing a number of trips um, and you're interested in having more accurate data, then I think it's quite useful. Um, so I've, I've certainly found it really, really good. Um, and then the further advancement on that, uh, Lease Spy, uh, which you uh, may have heard of, uh, you, you attach a Bluetooth device uh, into your ODB uh, point, which is under the steering wheel in the car. Uh, that's where the garage or engineer would usually plug their diagnostics computer into to uh, read data from the brain, uh, the ECU of the car. Um, this Bluetooth adapter just literally pops in there and uh, sync it up to your phone and it's, it, it, it gives you uh, live data of what's happening within the vehicle. Uh, the current state of charge, uh, the distance, the power draw for the various uh, facilities on the vehicle. Um, so yeah, really, really useful. And of course, when you tie that into a, a better route planner, uh, you move away from its uh, matrix for consumption, its reference consumption to actually live data which is really, really good. Um, and so you, it's, it's now less sort of pessimistic, if you like, with uh, what it expects your arrival charge at, or your arrival state to be. Um, and because of course, because it constantly tracks it through your route, um, it's much more accurate uh, for uh, planning um, and uh, you know live tracking of your actual progress uh, through the route. So let's just uh, take a quick look around the screen here. You'll notice down the right hand side it says 100%. Um, that's um, the 
I, the car was charged up overnight. I went into the car this morning, updated Leaf Spy with the latest data. And as you can see on the screenshot there, 99 point something percent. And that's taken live data, goes to the server at Root Planner. And, uh, and that's how we can see it both on the app and uh, on the PC. Um, I've got a, a saved route here, which I'm uh, looking to do over the next couple of days. Uh, myself and the wife are going to take a trip up to Oxford, go to the castle there and um, uh, do a little walk. So uh, I've just clicked on that now and um, there we have it. Um, uh, some some information we've got here at the bottom. I'm just going to take this table off for a moment uh, just so we can see the map in more detail but we will come back to it um in uh, in just a moment so there's a, a a nice view of the map so a lot of this stuff you'll be familiar with uh, already i'm just going to click down here this will show me uh, where the car is at the moment it's just outside our house with a with a hundred um with a hundred percent charge and that takes us back then to the map overview. So a lot of this you'll be familiar with already. You can see you've got the, the main route, which it suggests here. And then you've got uh, an alternative route uh, around the back here. So I, I don't know why. Perhaps you'd want to avoid motorways or something. I don't know. But anyway, this route here is going to, would take us a little bit longer. Um, I think you're actually able to, uh, to click on it as well. And uh, it'll give you uh, the uh, other uh, options uh, available to you as well which gives me a 16 minute charge just north of uh, just north of Didcot here um, so yeah just going uh, back uh, here we go so uh, leaving home at 100% that's the actual state of charge of the car uh, my vehicle at the moment and uh, I can just uh, click on that at the moment and that's got my average consumption over the last uh, few journeys that I did and uh, since I've ha had a lease I've just been playing around with it driving around town so far so that's why the consumptions uh, perhaps um, a little bit higher than uh, than it needs to be and um, yeah just come back uh, to that so leaving home at 100% 1118 uh, 32 minutes stopping off at the winner uh, park and ride charge three percent uh it's uh, it's got here so yeah i don't know um there are some settings which which you can change so um if i want to arrive home with slightly more charge um or slightly less charge then i could probably uh, avoid this uh, avoid this here but we'll, we'll leave this at the moment because that's not really the purpose of what i'm trying to do here so there we are uh, the wind speed 22.1 miles an hour from the southwest so it's essentially a crosswind for the for the most part of our journey and um, latest uh, weather showing rain which is pretty accurate and 13 degrees uh, celsius uh, but then um, um, after the charge, it looks like it clears up a little bit. Uh, and then when we drive home, it looks like rain and 12 degrees and the wind pretty constant around uh, 22 uh, miles, uh, miles an hour here. So, yeah, um, that, that's going to give us that's an optional charge here because I can see we've got uh, arriving home with 22 uh, percent. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, you, those that are familiar with route plan, you know that you can change your uh, arrival um, charge and and your um, uh, home return charge um, state of charge uh, as you see fit. So we can negate this. I mean, it's only literally three percent and three minutes. That's, that's personally, I think it's hardly worth it as we've got such a nice amount of charge when we get back and we don't need to do anything while we're there. Um, so just looking at the settings here. So some of the things that you won't see if you don't have the um, uh, Leaf Spy uh, app uh, linked to uh, Route Planner. Um, so there, there, there's the car, and um, as you know, on here you can select another model. So if you are looking at a different vehicle, or different type of vehicle, perhaps you're you're looking to change your car, or this might be the first time you're looking at electric vehicles. Select a car in there. You've got lots of options, um, and it'll actually give you. Uh, the detail of the of the trip based on its reference consumption so you can see which you know perhaps you might be able to see which car is best for you maybe i don't know um so there we go uh, there's the nissan leaf and uh, we have a uh, state of charge 100 percent. And, and this is the really cool thing here we've got um live um sorry uh back onto here, uh, live cons reference consumption, and we've got live state of charge. So you don't have to put anything in here or mess around with anything in here. It's going to take it live uh, from the app uh, via the server. All this stuff remains the same. Your reference speed, battery charges that you like or want to avoid, any extra weight, uh, roof boxes and that sort of stuff that uh, that you might want uh, to uh, to take with you. 
um, and uh, any other settings here that uh, might be useful? Um, no, I don't think so. I think that's all pretty good as well. So automatic setting, use live state of charge, calibrated reference consumption, weather uh, and traffic. So of course, this is only stuff you can get on the um, on the premium. OK, so if we go um, if we go back to the car here and uh, the leaf, there's just something I want to show you on here, which is which has caught me out, which is quite important. Um, when you go onto the uh, the car and car settings, if you scroll down, there's another setting at the bottom here. If you open that up, there's a couple of options that you have here, which with the premium save my activities. I think that's really good because you're able then to review your journey and uh, look at the data that the, that the app has collected for, through uh, um, LeafSpy. Um, but the really important thing here is to override the car position. Now, one trip that I did recently, I didn't have this selected because I didn't know it was available. Um, and the route took the car's GPS position, which doesn't update that regularly. Um, and it meant that the data that I got back was really quite skewed um, and when I was watching the app it was freezing frequently I mean I did a trip to Basingstoke uh, last night and I think it probably picked up my position maybe four or five times out of the whole journey and um, I, I might if I can find it on here show you the map if I might be able to show you that uh, now I'll, I'll do it in a minute um, it, it didn't show the data very well at all and I was wondering why this was happening and, and whether I was, didn't have 4G on my phone and prior to actually installing LeafSpy and actually prior to going with the premium um, the moving map on the iPhone was working you know flawlessly and on previous trips that we'd done it was performing flawless, flawlessly so I didn't quite understand what was going on and then I found uh, this little setting on here and it was set to this um, so it was using the car's GPS which is hopeless uh, in, in in terms of how it was transmitting that data to the server and then coming to the phone it wasn't happening quickly enough so um, clicking on this now uh, means that it's going to use the phone's uh, position um, rather than the car's position and it will use all of Lee Spy's information for its consumption etc and state of charge so um, that that is definitely uh, the way forward and I'll show you why when I go on to my drives here uh, the, one, the one that I did last night to Basingstoke I mean uh, this is which was hopeless really um, it, it kind of got me coming in and out of my uh, road here uh, and then this was the, actually the trip would have gone around here and then so it tracked me going down the M3 for a period and then it dropped off and then it picked me up again at my sort of destination uh, that dropped me again uh, until I came back then it picked me up again here <laughs> it drew a straight line all the way across so yeah the only thing it actually kept was the state of charge all the way through and it gave me a very accurate uh, arrival which you know, essentially is, is kind of what you want really um, but all of my reference speed was just rubbish um, my power um, I don't know the, I don't know whether the, the state of charge or, or power is any any real any, any real difference there to be honest with you uh, but uh, yeah so that's got power is actually in um, no, not showing there at all, is it? Uh, so yes, that, 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 all I got from that trip was state of charge, and that was simply because the the app um, didn't know where it was because it was using card data. So do make sure that um, you do make sure that you click this um, option at the bottom, which is override car position, and that will give you much more accurate data. So I suppose the next thing to do now is on Wednesday we're going to go and do this trip. Um, Obviously, I'll use the app. Uh, obviously, I'll use um, Leaf Spy with it, integrate it or have a look at the data. And then I'll come back to you and, and show you just how that is displayed and um, uh, what we were able to uh, take from it. So hopefully you found that useful. Quick rundown on uh, Root uh, Planner and its basic form. Some of the extra facilities you can get from the premium and uh, some extra facilities uh, over and above that. Uh, you can get if you've got Lease Buy and integrate it uh, with the app. Hope you found it useful and I'll uh, come back to you again uh, towards the end of the week uh, with the data that we've been able to collect from the trip. Thanks very much.